In this video, we'll discuss the standard level content regarding transport in plants, which is part of B3.2 on just transport in general. Not all plants have vascular tissue, right? Specially designed tissue um, aimed at transporting things, but the plants who do have a specialized tube called a xylem. And this xylem we need to associate with the movement of water, okay? So the xylem carries water from what I say roots to shoots. It only goes in this upward direction. And it relies on two basic forces that relate back to those special properties of water. So we have cohesion, which is water attracted to other water molecules, and adhesion, which is water highly attracted to the sides of the xylem. So the way that transpiration works is that water is going to evaporate through the stomata of the leaves, and then because of cohesion, it's going to be highly attracted to the water molecules behind it, and it's going to pull those water molecules up in a single continuous column. Now it does all this without the use of energy, but you know, gravity is really kind of like pushing things in the opposite direction. So because water is also um, highly adhesive to the sides of the xylem, that again helps to pull water up against the force of gravity due to that sucking or pulling or tension created by the evaporation through those stomata. And we can think of that as what we call a transpirational pull. It is literally a pulling force happening from the um, evaporation through those holes called stomata. So when thinking what the xylem has to be able to do, we need to get water moving upwards through this structural feature, right? So what kind of adaptations might a xylem have? Well, uh, the xylem is made out of dead hollow cells and that's going to be very important for the maintenance of a continuous water column. So if this is a water molecule and it's evaporating, then it needs to be able to pull the water molecules up beneath it and that relies on cohesion. Cohesion only works if they are in contact with each other. So the fact that that xylem is hollow and made out of dead cells allows all those water uh, molecules to maintain contact, a continuous column, cohesion works. Now, this xylem is going to be under a lot of pressure. It's gonna need a lot of structural support, and that's where we get this lignin um, coming in and being very useful. So lignin is a polysaccharide, and I can see it. It's in these like rings um, that line the outside of the xylem. So these uh, lignin rings, that's, get, that's what gets thicker every year, so we can kind of see those rings on a tree. But in general, this lignin is here to to help provide structural support and prevent the collapse of the xylem. The xylem is also going to have these like pits um, along the outside. So if I had to draw those in, that might look like something like this. Okay, so there's little pits here along the outside of the xylem, and that's really great for water to be able to pass through. As we'll learn about later, water needs to be able to move between the xylem and the other tube of the plant, which is the phloem. So we need some pits in order for that water to be able to pass in and out. Now we have to be able to look at micrographs um, and be able to find things like the xylem and the phloem. So let's kind of deconstruct what we're being asked to do here. Distribution of tissues means where are these different features? in the transverse section of the stem. Okay, well, if I'm thinking about a plant, mind you, this is going to look quite bad. <laughs> here's the stem, here's maybe some roots, and here's, I don't know, a couple of leaves. Wow, this is as bad as I thought it would be. Okay, if I'm looking at the stem, a transverse section means I'm taking a cut out of the side like this, that's the transverse section, and then I'm gonna flip it over on its side. So kind of like taking a slice out of the middle of a loaf of bread. So I'm just looking at a section of the stem and I'm looking at a dicotyledonous plant. Well, plants in general can be classified in lots of different ways. One of the ways you might hear them referred to is monocots and dicots. It's just two different groups of plants. Don't worry, we only have to know how dicotyledonous plant tissue is arranged. 
Well, anyways, when I take a cross section, uh, a transverse cross section, and then I lay it on its side, I'm going to get a picture like this. And what I'm going to notice is that all along the outside, arranged in this like ring, um, we'll see these things. These are called vascular bundles, okay? So your vascular system is like your arteries, veins, and capillaries. A plant's vascular system is going to be made up of two tubes, okay? One of which is the xylem. That's what we just talked about. And the xylem you're going to notice is always going to be the part of the vascular bundle that's closest towards the center of the plant. So are you noticing in this picture that each of these vascular bundles tends to have two regions? We have a region closer towards the outside and then a region closer towards the inside. Well, this region closer towards the inside is the xylem and that other bit of tissue closer towards the outside of each vascular bundle is the phloem. Okay, so this is what we are being asked to do here is, A, can we find a vascular bundle? And then within a vascular bundle, do we understand that the xylem is going to be more towards the center and the phloem is going to be more closer to the periphery? That's all this means. Now, as you can see, there are other things in here. This very inside portion here is called the pith. Okay, and then surrounding these vascular bundles is an area known as the cortex, okay? And then all along the outside here, we have this region called the epidermis. So dermis means skin, epi on the outside, that's the epidermis. So let's just be clear on what each of these features does, okay? The xylem is there for transporting water, that's what we've been talking about. The phloem is there to transport sugar or other like organic molecules that the plant is producing. The epidermis is there for like protection, waterproofing, keeping things within that stem. The cortex, this is where photosynthesis is gonna happen. It also supports those vascular bundles, but in general, we'll find um, lots of different cell types there. And then the pith doesn't really have a function per se. It provides bulk to that stem, okay? But here are the distribution of tissues within a stem. Now, in a root, we're going to find many of the same features, just in a slightly different arrangement. So all along the outside here, we have the epidermis, Okay, we have the xylem, which is all the way in the center, and it's conveniently kind of like in this X shape. And we have the phloem, okay, which is located near the xylem. We're always going to find them together, but a little bit closer to the periphery. And we have the cortex right in here. And in general, these are going to have like the same function. The only thing that I would point out is that on the epidermis, we would see these little root hairs. These are there to increase the surface area for water absorption. But the same basic layout here between the stem and the roots, or I should say the same structural features. Um, but because they're in a different part of the plant, they may have um, a slightly different arrangement. So some things to look out for here with transport in plants.